Howdy peeps and welcome back to the channel and back to what Sharpie is probably best known for big ass Russian tanks with even bigger ass guns in this case it's the Soviet 2A3 condensator 2P 406mm self propelled howitzer now this was a I think came to service in the 1950s or was it the 406mm howitzer mostly known for the fact that it was capable of firing nuclear shells um, apologies for you not being able to see the entire box lid it's a big box um, I can't actually get it all in I'm fully zoomed out and if I start waggling it around I'm just going to smack into the camera so there we go anyway as I said trumpeter 135th scale brand new release 2018 only just come out in the UK kit number if anyone is actually interested is 09529 length is 43 centimeters width is 10 centimeters quite low on the parts count only 830 though so let's open the box up and have a look see what's inside shall we and this is going to take some manoeuvring, I think. Your usual trumpeter box. They don't go thin and flimsy. If I can actually get the bloody thing open without tearing the lid. And also, as usual for trumpeter, it's packed full. First thing that greets us on the top of the box is the usual advertising bump for the 2S14 Zalo. Object 199 BMPT, which is we known as the Terminator, the Nanchang, the Texas a T62 new variant, and obviously for the condensator itself. You know, got to advertise the kit that's in the box, and we have our again our usual master tools or trumpeter tools. Some very cool stuff they make. I've not actually bought much of it. And I've got um, I've got a couple of chisels. That's about it. But they do do some really quite useful and cool stuff. And my uh, photo etch bender is also a trumpy one. Yeah, all sorts of cool gadgetry. And we have the instructions and the colour call out, which I shall put where I can get to. And let's start with the main hull, which isn't as big as you might expect. It's a fairly fairly narrow hull, but I think most of the actual workings are mounted over the fenders rather than actually inside the hole. And here we have the slide moulded fenders. Lower hull, not a huge amount of detail on it, I think most of it is stuck on afterwards. Well, I don't think there is a huge amount to show on the lower hull as it is. Not warped, sits square, no flash. Nice and crisply moulded. Some monstrous ejector pins on the inside, but that doesn't matter because they'll never be visible. So, yay. And on to some very cool slide moulded fenders. They bagged individually. And again, you, 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 a pair, teeth in sharp. Ooh, put them back in. The usual trumpeter levels of detail, all crisp, clean, flash free. And as you can see, slide molded. So just basically stick onto the side. Oh, it's uh, detailed underneath. Let's see where it's been cut off of the 
injection sprue so they'd need cleaning up but other than that and the rather large ejector pin square pads um, one directly under the detail there which is probably not great but you're not going to see that let's be honest the track's going to be running along there and you've got that in the way as well so yeah it's not a problem and we get the other side which is pretty similar kind of thing I've got a couple of little sink marks there, but it's a tank, they're dense, okay. So, same story on the bottom, it's even more complex slide moulds with that part there, that part being hollow and those vents being open, so yeah, that must have been an interesting mould. Uh, obviously we've got the same honking great sprue gates to clean up, but I'm just trying to figure out how the heck they moulded that because that hollow, that hollow at a different angle and that hollow from the opposite side, I have no idea how they moulded that one. And I'm not going to think too hard about it. And the next sprue we come to is kind of the, um, well, it's the gun, let's put it that way. <laughs> and it only just fits in shot <laughs> wouldn't like to find yourself being shot at <laughs> directly with one of these things would you or <laughs> indirectly be bad enough let alone directly so spruce C as you can see that's an A4 cutting mat so yeah, the gun is 30 centimeters long and there's more to go on the end as well, and the back end. Again, crisp, nice, well moulded, good use of ejector pads to re on the parts to reduce the risks of ejector pin marks on the parts. We've got some fairly chunky and plentiful location marks on the or location points on the main barrel. That is going to take some sanding and filing, but <clears throat> that's the kind of thing I don't want an aluminium gun barrel for it. It's quite honestly, the weight of it is probably just going to, <laughs> it's going to, yeah. thing's going to be doing stoppies all the time. You'd have to put weight in the back of the hole to hold it down. Um, but yeah, everything else, really nicely detailed, crisp, clean. These parts again, quite complex mouldings. There's a little bit of micro flash around some of the uh, locator pin holes, but nothing to worry about. Quick swipe of the sander, that'll be gone. Where you need a quick rub with a knife. Next, we have two identical sprues, sprues A. Trump is inimitable fashion. God, so I do like trumpeter bags. They cut nicely, they're quiet, and they don't have staples in. And they do the job of protecting the parts quite nicely as well. So what do we have? We have some I'm guessing which are the idlers and the drive gears and a couple of the return rollers and a bunch of teeny weeny little parts. Not really much idea what most of them are or where they'd go. I mean, you've got your obvious lifting hooks, grab handles, tow rope or tow cable ends, spade, <laughs> that kind of stuff. but. Mainly just fiddly little bits. There's a little bit of flash on a couple of the parts. But, yeah. You know, that'll come off nice and easy. So, a little bit of fluffy flash just on the edge of a part. That's, to me anyway, that's not a problem. That's easily 
sortable. Um, it's when you start getting large amounts of flash covering things that it's an issue. And then we get a Trump, one of Trumpeter's special surprise sprues. They don't want us to see what's on it. So it's wrapped in bubble wrap of some description. Well, foam. Which tells me the majority of the time I will keep the bag for this one. Generally, if it's wrapped in foam from Trump Trumpeter, it's either clear all very delicate and they've done it to protect the parts and why other manufacturers don't follow suit and do that I have no idea because it means you get your parts not broken so yes as we can see we've got all the fiddly filigree delicate grab rails and handles on this sprue which do need a little bit of protecting, let's be honest, and the uh, super, super fine, if you can even see it, uh, headlights arounds, all sorts of teeny tiny little bits, all the kind of bits that the Sharpie likes sticking together. And you can see by the thousands of ejector stubs that are on the back of the sprue, no ejector pin marks on the actual parts themselves. Yay! So we'll wrap that back up to keep it safe. I'm not sure what we'll do with the clear parts. So again, I think you know, Trumpeter and Hobby Boss are the only company that does actually take the care to wrap the parts. Like the clear parts, I mean, if you buy an air. Uh, Struggling to speed today, I do apologise. Slightly low on sleep, slightly overheated. Also, rather excited because I've been waiting for this kit for a year. And again, we have say, another sprue of fiddly tiny delicate parts, all of which at first glance appear. Very nicely crisply moulded, nothing's looking soft or wonky or horrible with the little uh, slide moulded cover for whatever it is up there. There is a again a bit of flash on that and it's not quite lined up. But a little bit of sanding and that will soon disappear. 30 seconds with a knife and that will all clean up and sort out. And all looking good to me. I'll just bring that up so you can maybe see what I mean. That the uh, sprue, the two parts of the mould weren't quite perfectly lined up there. But that's like a few seconds of the knife, and that'll soon sort that out. Again, I'll pop that one back into its bag. I mean, I'm likely to be. Let's be honest. I'm likely to be building this fairly soon. Um, as soon as I clear something off my bench and uh, that could be as quick as putting a flat coat on something <laughs> or finish polishing something anyway next sprue this is um, parts for the gun I'm assuming as it looks like hydraulic rams and big chunky parts and mounting parts and again very nicely molded the rams themselves these parts along this edge are all slide molded the bits that go inside the rams are solid single piece so just sand off any seam and again all looking good there's a lot of slide moulding on this sprue and so all, all these are all these are so kudos trumpeter gradually upping the tech level 
One of these days you'll be as good as Bandai. And can you imagine if Bandai actually seriously started making planes and tanks? Oh boy would the other manufacturers get worried. So, next sprue. We have what looks like the breech. The driver's cab. Okay, I mean this. <laughs> I mean that part is the driver's cab. Okay. Now we can see the door, the window. Driver sits in there with all his controls. That part is the back of the gun breech. Um. Yeah, almost the same size. But again, another very nicely moulded sprue. I'm um, maybe not. I've maybe not as crisp as a dragon kit might be it's certainly crisp enough very nicely moulded and going to be an impressively sized lump of plastic sat on the shelf when it's built and here we have the bit that people swear about so we'll grab this bit first we have sprue with just a K sprue, which is I think the inner side plates for the gun mount and the I would say upper deck, but it, <laughs> the gun sits fairly low, and so that is that well, might be. Can't see it going in that way. It's got, to, yeah, got to go that way. So we have the two side plates again. So these would mount inside the hull. So the hull is coming like that. These mount either side. That's where the gun mounts through. Um, top plate of the hull again. Very, you know, fairly well, not very, fairly nicely moulded sprue. Some delicate detail with the uh, hinge bar actually already moulded on. <laughs> That's a bit delicate. Again, though, we do have a little bit of flash around some of the grill. But again, that's. I mean, let's see how easy that is to clean up, shall we? Sander. on see if your modeling comes to the point where doing that is too much and means that the kit is crap then I'm sorry but I don't care who you are your time isn't worth that much and then we have I assume these are four in four identical sprues on these Ruby yes they are so we have four with which will be the main running gear. So suspension parts, wheels, I oh, return rollers, and whatever other parts there happen to be four of. <laughs> Again, wheels very nicely moulded, crisp, clean, well detailed. Same with the rest of the parts. Again, we've got that little bit of flash on some of the edges but uh, nothing to worry about as, as I was just showing nothing a few swipes with the sander won't fix and yep so we've got four of those and then the next I don't know probably about 10 or 12 sprues of the same as well you can guess what they're going to be can't you Get in there. And yes, track links, although, what have we got? Six. They're pretty much typical trumpet and multi link tracks. I do have guide horns molded on, nah, because they're solid guide horn on these rather than the hollow like on the T90. 
crisp, nice. They'll do the job perfectly adequately. Um, I'm not saying a set of frills or something would be better, better slightly maybe. But chances of buying frills for a, something as one-off as this, I don't think they're going to make them. Well, they might do. I might be wrong. But the one decal. Oh well, I mean I'm not going to bother taking out the bag, it's just the instrument panel for the driver. And we have some clear parts, which look clear. Again, I'm not going to bother opening those, because it's just four flat windows and one light lens. So, I mean... Pretty much any man any manufacturer can mould flat clear parts. And we have the bag with the string and the copper tow cable in it. Not entirely sure what the string's for. We'll find out. Guessing part of the gun raising mechanism. And then this side, fairly sensible and well for a trumpet of modern. Well, Trumpeter Russian tank, let's say. A surprisingly small amount of photo etch. So we've got all the various grills, bolts and grab handles, and a few other plates. The uh, barrel ring. So, yeah, all looking good. And that just leaves the destructions. And ever since someone actually complained about the use of the term destructions, because they found it offensive, because it should be instructions, I'm going to keep calling them destructions. Why? Because if something as simple as what is... Well, let's, let's be honest. A day-to-day -day saying in the UK... If something as simple as that causes you offence, well then, you need a slap. So, painting and marking guide in colour. Yeah, right. Um, it's green. The tyres are black. The metal bits are metal. The woody bits are wood. Yeah, I don't think we really need to worry about that too much. And... In normal trumpeter instruction manual, excuse me, let's have a quick swig. Mm -hmm. Usual trumpeter leg end, random instruction and bump, sprue map, and then on to something with lower hull. So those two parts I've said that go inside. Various random running gear all going together and getting put on. As you can see, quite a lot of wheels and idlers, uh, return rollers, sorry. The tracks going together fairly early. 101 links per side. There you go, that keep people happy. Then we have the um, Centre section, like I said, with a couple of bits of PE going on. Tow cable, more PE. Big bit going in. Front plate going on. And the fender with the driver's cab in it. Quite a bit of... Uh, Quite a bit going on inside there. It's certainly enough to add interest if you wanted to leave the door open because we have a separately moulded door. It doesn't have to be moulded shut. And that big old cagey thing is what goes over the headlight. So it's going to be mask the clear part with liquid masks. You actually stand a chance of getting it off once you've glued that on. 
and there's an etch part that goes over the top of it as well. Oh boy, that'll be fun lining that up. A right. few more bits going on there, more PE, guardrails, and we're on to the under, other side. A little simpler this side, again, more etch. Attaching them, although again, it's going to be can you get away with leaving them off? Are there bits that run between those fenders, as it were, let's say, and the main hull? Because if there are bits that glue between both, it's going to make getting the tracks on a pig. <laughs> Yes. Oh well, we shall find out. Worst, worst comes to the worst, might have to just chop a few guide horns off. And we're on to the hydraulics, the rams for the gun elevation, I'm guessing. And the <laughs> gun crouch mount, which is, as you can guess, rather large. Popping the gun together, the breech. And all the extra details, obviously quite a bit going into building the gun. Then mounting the gun on. I like the way they've done it with the two plugs that go in from either side. Go through the sides and into the main gun so you can paint that out of the vehicle. And then just stick it in afterwards, you just got to paint them up. Then more hydraulic rams. Again, yeah, they should be okay. You should be able to line that all up as you put the gun in. Actually, I wouldn't like to try doing it like that with the gun already in and trying to get hydraulic rams to line up. Probably better to put the gun in, line the rams up as you're putting the gun in, then lock it into place. Anyway, that's my theory. Various guardrails and a few small squibbly bits going on. Then the shell loading crane. That going on the back and job done. Sit back, admire and figure out where the heck you're going to put it. So, there goes a not so rapid look through the Trumpeter Sobit 2A3 Condensator 2P 406mm self propelled howitzer. Condensator, because I'm guess that's probably what happens if something gets hit by it, it just turns into condensation. A fine red mist. Um, but yeah. Looks a really nice kit to me. Um, it is on the pricier side of things, being a brand new release and big and limited kind of there's not many people going to buy this let's be honest it's not going to sell like a tiger or a panther or any other such nasty horrible german rubbish so no i have to price it to make it worthwhile selling it and all that kind of jazz and there's not going to be many parts that will be usable in anything else either so there we go anyway hope you enjoyed the video if you did, give us a thumbs up, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Tap the bell icon, that will send you an email whenever I stick someone else up. But as it is, enjoy modelling, have fun, peace out, rock on, bye bye.